Hello, listeners of 90.3 WMSC Upper Montclair. My name is Aiden Ivers, and today I'm feeling pretty grateful for Zoom and technology, because both of which are allowing me to talk to an artist all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, London native, R&B and pop artist, Sophia Giuliani. Ms. Giuliani, how are you doing today? I am doing absolutely amazing. How are you? I am doing so well. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I know it's late at the time I was speaking in London, and we just want to say it on behalf of WMSC, we appreciate you coming on, and we're excited to speak with you today about your illustrious career. You know what? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for the support. Of course, of course. So my first question for you is, uh, according to your website, right? It reads yeah. that you, you, you began your music career at yeah. only the age of nine years old. <laughs> and just right off the top of the bat, that is yeah. just an incredible milestone. It's such such a young age like that that's amazing and and specifically you started your music career when you starred the lead role of the play Evita where you did you, you took on a lead role and you performed Madonna's song Don't Cry For Me Argentina I and did. People, people at WMSC this is how you've grown in opportunity you start <laughs> when you're young okay so just take take notes from Sophia right here and, <laughs> and uh, I just want to ask you from from that point how would you say that experience in the theater has impacted your musical experience right now and your creative process? Well, obviously, like you said, I've started young because I was influenced by music already in my household. So moving from my house to the stage, I learned many things like songwriting, how to get a stage presence, especially because obviously you're in the public eye all the time. So when you move that into a music career, you obviously have to transfer the skills of thinking on your feet, you know, and just genuinely going with the creative process because I've realized all, th all the way through just performing on stage, just starting to perform and release singles, that it's been quite a patient process and I've had to develop myself over time in order for my music to develop. So I think definitely, like I said before, stage presence and just kind of maturing in my music. Mm, okay. Well, that's like, aside from, like you said, just being present on the stage, mm -hmm. you've also been present in your local scene around London, right? You've been performing at a number of local venues to get mm -hmm. yourself out there and specifically one you you did a charity event right for I did. Uh, the, great, the great ormond street hospital can you tell us a little bit about what that charity like was about like what what did that do for that hospital obviously i went from like doing small gigs when i got the opportunity for to do the gig for the great ormond hospital i was you know beyond honored because i think that one was at the o2 if I can recall, hmm. that was a massive opportunity for me because obviously I had only done gigs putting myself out there. This was a chance to help others as well. Hmm. And obviously I'm doing the thing that I love most and helping a charity. And this charity was raising money to help, well, no thing, but in this situation, it was helping children. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously being a child myself at the time, I was quite young. So as soon as I hear the opportunity to help others, you know, I'm on the stage as soon as possible. Yeah. But yeah, it was an amazing experience. And I am definitely doing more games in the London area and hoping to go more global soon enough. Of course, of course. And uh, in my country of the United States, mm. a couple of your songs or one of them has actually been present on major radios, you know? So yeah. it's not it's not really far-fetched if you think about it. You know, it's, it's like you're already spreading the cross your country the united kingdom you know so i mean that's pretty yeah. that's, a, that's a good thing to keep in mind you know and crazy to think about <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and and relating to your songs that you've released so far you've mm -hmm. also accompanied them with each of your own music videos yeah and normally <laughs> normally you know these uh, these artists that we listen to um they they choose like they choose which songs they would feel comfortable with relate with releasing you know, hmm. big project, but for you, that's with all your work. And <laughs> what was, what, how, what was it like for you to release such composing, relating for reflecting projects on your already released work? Well, every song that I've put out so far has been completely different, completely bold, and completely mm -hmm. my style. I've made sure of that. I never put something out that I'm not pleased with. And I knew that if I put out a song, it had to have visual imagery with it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, starting from my first music video onwards, I had no idea where to start. And I, over time, I was able to build up this amazing team of directors and people just supporting me the whole way through. Obviously, it went from 
my first music video, which was like an animation, supposed to be happy, joyful, to yes. bold, you know, video techniques and things that we had never tried before. And I felt like with each song, obviously, like I said before, I've developed and I wanted each uh, music video to show me developing as well. So other side, ain't a game, waiting for you, especially water run dry, you know, with the mannequins and all the crazy stuff that you wouldn't really have in music videos, especially with, you know, my age, I wanted something that was completely out there and not done mm -hmm. yet on my kind of, you know, vision. So... I'd have to say, I mean, the whole process has been so much fun. We have so many, so many bloopers that I've, you know, released and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just, the whole takeout of it is that I'm, I'm still doing more. I'm still recording in the studio. I'm still making music videos. And I think that that will be something that I keep going, keep doing stuff that's bold and out there and completely abstract, if you know what I mean. Of course I know. It, that makes total sense. And you've probably heard this from hundreds of people, both face to face and online but your voice in your music videos and in your work is spectacular to say the oh least. thank you so much uh, if our listeners choose to listen to your work they will I, I guarantee them they'll be blown away with just the style that you do and i i believe with your work what makes you stand out is you you really focus on what kind of message you put out in your songs you know and like on Sometimes when we put on the radio, we we're listening to it, and like it's it's like, okay, what am I listening to right now? You know, but yeah. I feel like if our listeners listen to your work, they're they're gonna catch on right away, and they're gonna be in tone with your vibe. You know, it's oh, thank it's, you it's so really much. yeah, it's, it's, it's the dedication that you have at, again, such a young age is it's really telling for your future. I think you know, and thank specifically, real of course, and relating to your first de your debut song, ain't a game, right? According to DesiBlitz.com, you did, a, did an interview with them, and you said with them that you wanted to have a serious message, right, about, it. you wanted to have a song about, like, with relationships, you know, sometimes yes. they're going to be toxic, sometimes people might betray you, and it's like, well, what do you do from that point, you know, if you go through that, and you said you wanted to have that kind of serious undertone with yes. such a colorful, lighthearted game, right, and yeah. That, in my opinion, that is your most, that's, that's the one that stands out the most, you know, and, and, and that music video was also nominated for a Cornwall film, a film it festival award, right? It was, yes, that oh, was really God. exciting as well. Well, that's, it has a right to be, it has righteous to be nominated for that, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of dedication, you know, and, and uh, how was it, how was it like, again, making that sort of music video? for yeah. in a game no well that was the first music video i did and like you just said i wanted something because it was my first one i didn't want to go something deep and mysterious and serious mm -hmm. i wanted something but with a serious message but also something really fun and it was fun to make as well obviously it was that animation so we used all these different cameras and green screens yeah. etc et but mm -hmm. i was able to work with this team of amazing animators and really get their skills out there as well mm -hmm. um funny story actually in the obviously in the whole music video i'm walking throughout this like this whole you know scenic fairy tale ish kind of place yeah. you know we drafted a whole storyboard for it wow. and <laughs> fun fact we were, we, it was coated in green screen, but we basically used the treadmill, but it wasn't working. So I had to get oh. one of the creative team to just like move it slowly. And cause I was wearing heel, try not to tread on them. So yeah. like, I was like trying to balance myself on this treadmill, all these things, you know, acting around me. And like, after a while I got on this cloud. So I'm like sitting down on this yeah. thing. <laughs> it was just, oh, it was amazing. Obviously that I am, it was my first music video. So I was meeting these new directors, which were the like, funnest people ever you know made some definitely lifelong friends who did help me with the other music videos that I've done so far but yeah it was just like around a few weeks of just animation practice walking singing the song as well as doing it in heels it was like a five hour to six hour shoot <laughs> I gotta say um but yeah just an amazing process and yeah. if I could do it again I would in a mm. heartbeat well you know I've like I I was I was watching your other music videos too, and I can say like I I already have I have the intuition that yes. they're gonna be on the same level. No, that's what's like whatever you release in the future, that's gonna that your dedication is gonna shine through that too. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. And it's like something that I noticed with with all your collective songs so far is like you you write themes really important 
themes, you know, really connective to your audience, you know, about like we were talking about with Aiden Game, you know, we're talking about toxic relationships or maybe the struggle that an individual might be feeling, you know, it's, there's a, a lyric that you used on your song, The Other Side, where you write about how it's like, you, you feel like something's wrong or you feel like a failure just by the second you get out of bed. And I feel yeah. like a lot of, you know, people in adolescence, a lot of people moving into early adulthood, they can totally relate to that, especially at our college radio station, you know, <laughs> people can relate to that, you know, so aside from, from those themes in your creative process, what other kinds of themes do you see yourself sharpening in the work that you're currently working on? Well, obviously when I write my songs, I write about them from my personal experiences and then develop that into something that can be engaging, but also, you know, something that people can relate to because mm -hmm. I want it to be something, my music to be something that everyone can just, you know, harmoniously love. Yeah. So I think in the future, obviously I've done quite some, some quite, you know, serious themes here, but I think moving on, it's just going to be like messages on how I go through life and see how other people you know, can also go through that because I feel like I've done that so far with anti game. It was like, you know, toxic relationships, whether it be friends, etc., etc. Other side kind of developing from that. Like you said, have you ever felt like you're a failure when you just got out of bed? Just very simple things like that. And then, but me obviously going in through education, in high school, I'm juggling that throughout music. I feel like just my own personal experiences. I just channel that through my music because at the end of the day, music really is an outlet for me. So obviously I see it as something like, it's not just a hobby for me. I find it really like, I feel like it's an outlet for me to express basically. It's something that I can put my ambitions to, pour my thoughts into and just produce something amazing at the end of the day. So yeah, basically just putting my life experiences in there and just seeing how I develop from there. I'm just going with the little victories right now. So just little things in my life, nitpick it and just have fun with it, you know? Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Nothing to be taken seriously. I, of course, and I think, that, again, that's what makes you stand out as a rising artist, you know, and specifically with your most released song, Water Run, Run Dry, right? Yeah. Aside, like, that was just released, and on June 30th, you got another yeah. song coming out, right? I do! I'm really, yeah. really excited for it. <laughs> Flames, it's called, right? And I think, again, this is just... It's, it's, think, it's like thinking from the end, if, you, if from your creative perspective, because it's like you just released a song, Water Run Dry, yes. metaphoric about, about trying to erase like doubt in your life. And then you're releasing Flames in a few days, like a week from now, I think. I know. Like from that different from that end, you know, that's like, it's the creativeness from you is, is just sparkling. It's amazing, you know? Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, <sighs> according to your press release for it, it says, Flames, the song that you're releasing in about a week from now, it's it's very cutthroat from relating to the main issues that someone can relate to in their life, which mm. they can relate to, you know, like lies from someone, can relate to anger, stress, anxiety, or most importantly, most importantly, consequences, you know. And do you do you believe this will translate well with your audience once it is released? I believe that the songs I've already put out, what wait for even like um waiting for you, which was quite a bold and out there song, which people I don't think you know realize was gonna come out because that mm. was you know, um flames is gonna be something. It's like the outburst of water run dry. It's the mm. partnership. It's basically you let the water run dry, so now I'm gonna in your face like yeah. that. You know, <laughs> it's dramatic. It's supposed to be like out there, and I hope you know that everyone can kind of take that and just kind of take it as they come because you know flames is going to be it's ridiculously out there i like do like these ancestral spiritual tarzan cries and smoke machines and you know bold eyeliner it's supposed to be something that is unexpected just like basically what i'm trying to do is shock the audience and i hope that you know when it does come out people will see that you know that cutthroat edge is just something that is just this great development for water and dry. I wanted it to blend in nicely, but also be that shock, if you know what I mean. Of course, of course. And if our listeners would want to check out your work coming out, where would they be able to find you? On a well, yeah, they can find me on Spotify and YouTube as just Sophia Galani, all streaming, you know, platforms as Sophia Galani. Yeah. They can find me on Instagram for like various updates. I'm the most active there uh, mm -hmm. on Sophia.anisa.galani. They can find me on Facebook and Sophia Galani, and they can find me on TikTok, which is Sophia Galani Music. Wow. Okay. And 
And before we close this off, I want to talk about a touch upon one more topic, or a couple more actually. So a couple weeks, a couple days ago, actually, you yeah. performed at the Contemporary Music Awards, right? Prom Prom Music Awards, right? How was that? How was it? That was sick. I got to perform my newest single, Flames. Uh, it was like half an hour set. Really, really fun time. You know, I met some mm. new people there. Obviously, it was in like London again. You know, trying to get my name out there as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was an absolute blast. Like I was rehearsing you know, midway through the state, like midway, no, midway, like before the actual event started. And I just remember like all the lights were playing around and the mics. And, oh, it was a great experience, and I'm glad that I did it. And I definitely and probably will be performing again. Of course. And speaking about performing again, a couple days from now, Saturday. June 25th, you're performing at Ludon Pride. Yes! Oh my goodness. The festival <laughs> that marks 50 years since the first UK Pride March. That must be really exciting for you. It's, How are you feeling about that? Oh my God, it's, it's insane. I like I am um, obsessed with the LGBTQ plus community. I've been, you know, vouching, putting all these things on my story, whatever, but you know, just to perform at the Pride Festival, you know, in front of all these people, which I know it'll be a big crowd because I mm. know. You know, we always come through with the Luton. Yeah. But I'm so excited. I'm going to be performing Other Side and two other covers. Just, oh, you know, really yeah. getting LGBTQ+. And, you know, getting an LGBTQ+, you know, audience. So that's going to be amazing. I'm really excited for that. I know. And going back to what we were talking about before, your work, your creativeness, I feel like that could connect with, like, universally, like, anybody who listens to your work. You know what I mean? Like just the little intricate parts that most artists, I think, wouldn't keep wouldn't keep in mind, you know. But mm. you keep those things in mind, and I think that's really what makes you stand out from all the other from like people trying to make it in through the music industry. You know, you have like you're thinking from the the end, and that's really smart to do, you know. <laughs> and before we close this off, I know there's it's it's good to keep things you know private when you're creating them and you're in in the music process, right? But what could our listeners and fans of yours expect from you next, aside from Flames? Mm -hmm. So, obviously, Flames coming out. Boom, boom, boom. That's coming. Done. I have some more gigs coming up. Um, one in Westfield, um, I ha which is in a few weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Hazel Mare French Festival, 2nd of July. Mm -hmm. Trying to remember all the dates here. <laughs> um, but aside from that and future updates that will come on my Instagram, I am currently working... You'll get an exclusive, <laughs> um, but I'm currently working on a music video that involves like a 360 drone uh, for a new song, oh. but can't give too many details now. Of course. But yeah, but let's just say the title will be Won't Be One, but I, that's it. I'll have okay. to stop there. Yeah. Right. That's, that's all we can ask for, you know, as fans are eagerly waiting for your next release. Sophia Gialani, thank you very much. For joining us at WMC 90.3 Upper Montclair today and the people on the radio right now. Flames by Sophia, Sophia Gilani. June 30th, it comes out on streaming services. But we have an itsy bitsy preview for you right now. And by itsy bitsy, I mean we have the full song for you ready to go. So people at 90.3 <laughs> WMC, let's hear it. 